another edition of Blue Blood on the main line. I'm your host, Curtis Sumter, and I'll be joined today by head coach of Maryland Eastern Shore, uh, Villanova favorite, one of my all-time favorite coaches, people in life, Jason Crafton. What's up, brother? How you doing? Curtis Sumter, what's up, brother? Happy to be on the show. Appreciate you having me. Let's have some fun, man. Oh, man, I can't tell you. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you doing what great things that you're doing right now with the university. Um, so for those who don't know you, I just want to kind of give them a brief summary. Um, Jason Crafton was was a grad assistant at Villanova. I believe my sophomore year, you you came in. Uh, you were there for a few years. You, you left and became an assistant coach at the University of Navy with, with Billy Lang. Um, after that, I believe you came on head coach at NIAC, did your thing yeah. there, and uh, they got a chance to come and work with the Sixers and the, 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 the NBA G League down with the Blue Colts, uh, and then uh, right on to, to Maryland Eastern Shore, am I correct? Or did you, you make it. another stop you in got between? It. You, got, you got it all there. Two years at Nova, uh, seven at the Naval Academy, six at NIAC College. As Division II head coach, and then one year with the Sixers in the G League, and then uh, in my fourth year here. So this is year 20. Crazy, right? 20. <laughs> Crazy, man. And people don't even know, like, you know, you're, you're, only, you're only 40. Like, you're only, like, two years <laughs> older than me. We actually share the same birthday. We got That's a birthday right. in a week. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're forever linked and in so many different ways. Um, oh, yeah. But like you say, you've been coaching for, for, for 20 years, and you're about to be 41. So... Just tell me, like, how? where did it all start? Like, how, what made you decide to get into coaching 20 years ago? You know, I, I think when, when we all wanted to play in the NBA and, you know, and uh, I'm a Division II player and, uh, you know, not having to – I had a solid career, but not such a type of career where the NBA was going to be possible for me. So you start, you know, later in the basketball career, start thinking, you know, what am I going to do? And I was majoring in communications and uh, doing broadcasting. And I knew if, if the basketball thing was going to happen, and I wanted to be involved in either you know communications field, doing TV, radio, broadcasting, or I wanted to coach. And I made the decision to to kind of really you know pursue coaching. And uh, Jay Wright was at Hofstra. I was from Long Island, and Jay was at Hofstra. I used to go to Hofstra and work their camps and things like that. And and uh, then he ended up at Villanova, and I used to start working Villanova camps and got to know Joe Jones real well. And that's kind of how it happened. And I started to just see, um, you know, coaches coming up and, and started to watch what they were doing. And I really just, you know, was enamored by the game and, and game preparation and, and just working kids out and wanted to get into coaching. That's amazing, man. So you were working Villanova camps when Coach Wright was there. Um, prior to, to getting a job at Villanova, it wasn't from the uh, – so, that's cool, man. So I wonder if, like, did we cross paths my freshman year, maybe during the summer or camp or anything like that? Were you there yeah, before taking a job? Or yeah, possibly the, the the funny story is I was working the camps. Billy Lane kind of got me into the work in the camps, and I would come down and work every camp. Like in the summertime, a lot of coaches would work a million camps. They would work, work six or seven different college camps and try to create all these different uh, connections. And and for me. I wanted to coach at Villanova, so I was like, I'm going to work every camp at Villanova. <laughs> so I would work, right, right, yeah. <laughs> work the day camps, the overnight camps, and Coach Lang just helped me get a, a dorm for the summer, and, I, and that's what I did. And that's that's kind of how I caught Jay, Coach Wright's eye because uh, just from working the camps and got an opportunity to uh, to end up working there. I'm not sure if we caught – they had me running around so much. I'm not sure if I ever saw you during that time until right, I actually right. was working, camps, working at Nova, but – um. Yeah, it's super appreciative to Coach Wright and, and Billy Lang and those guys for helping me out and just working those camps because that's that's kind of how I got into uh, the business. You're right. Villanova camps used to be serious back in the day. I forgot about the overnight camp and, and like, busloads of kids. So I can imagine because <laughs> sometimes um, they would let us go and I think do like curfew or maybe work or something like that and sit and maybe uh, one of the hallways for a little bit. But I felt my freshman year, the seniors, they had that sold up. It was like, yeah, I got to pay our dues. This is our gig, you know, so to speak. But I remember that. So if you were definitely working those camps, I'm sure you had no sleep. You were, you know, balls to the ball, <laughs> like hustling everywhere, doing everything. So that that's a, that's a testament to the dedication of what you wanted. And I'm glad it all 
it all worked out. And then, you know, you'd be seeing you on uh during preseason, you know, on, on the staff and and things of that nature. We was like, or maybe Jay walking on the team, or like you just transferred <laughs> in and we're going on. We're like, um, we're grad assistant. We're like, dude, we the same yeah, yeah. age. So what's going on? So it was it was cool. Um I well, remember, funny story uh, about that. Billy Lang actually almost got me in trouble because <laughs> Because I was I was fresh out of college and I always yeah. wanted to play it over. So when right. Coach Wright would throw me out there and say do some token defense or something like, like that, so Billy Lang would be in the back like this is your time to show Coach Wright that you should have played it going over. So right. like I'm supposed <laughs> to be going like 50 percent one day and I try to like do uh, Randy Foy goes baseline. I jump up and I try to like block the shot or something. And Coach Wright goes, what are you doing? This is a walkthrough. This is, you know, you know, Billy's like, <laughs> so Billy was, he was trying, he was like, oh man, I didn't think you were going to actually do it, crap. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> so yeah, I was a young guy, man, learning the ropes and out there. and My just having God. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, we, we, we challenge you too, and in a good way, in a fun way. I mean, we were all young. Like I said, you you were learning how to become a coach. We were learning how to be pros. And, you know, as connected as we were, there were still some some boundaries and things, but that also made the relationship strong, you know, like um, where we're still connected to this day, 20 plus years, and we can laugh about some of yeah. the things that that happened then. But like you said, just, you know, you playing a token defense. And I remember <laughs> individuals, Randy was like, yeah, I got Coach Kraft on me. Like, you know, just <laughs> those little things. Because not everybody had, you know, someone they could, like, you know, kind of talk shit to a little bit. That's kind of easy. <laughs> Other than you, the guy he was going against. So yeah, that yeah. was always, always fun, man. And um, just, again, just seeing where you are now. So two years at Villanova, you – my first year there, we were NIT. Yep. And then second year, um, NCAA tournament. So you were there for my my first ACL. Yes. Right. It happened right. in the yeah. tournament. Yeah, um, yeah. tournament. Yeah. And, and, and gets that, that's, that's, yeah. And that's where the whole TNT came about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We had the TNT. No, and I think yeah. TNT came, the TNT came my sophomore year. Oh, did it? It came my sophomore year. Um, yes, because I remember, yeah, it was like Bump and Jason and then me, Allen, and Randy. Or if Mike was in the game, it would be, you know, Mike, Allen, and, and, and Randy or Mike, Allen, myself. But Jason and Bump just had to, like, kind of, you know, re rebound and kick it back out or if they get a quick post up, kind of do the thing. So that's how that whole TNT, because we, I think we're averaging, like, they had 20 turnovers a game, which was – it's what's funny is that's what Coach Wright. A lot of people call it, call it the dunker spot. Coach Wright would call it the hide spot. Remember you say, you know, <laughs> go, go hide out over there. Yeah, go ahead. Basically, so the guards could go do their thing. <laughs> hey, Vic, go to the hide spot and just you know hide down there. And then hey, yeah. you know, we're gonna try to get some two man games with Randy and Kurt and you know and Alan Ray and Mike and Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> kick, kick it out. You got it. I remember one time. Jason was calling for the ball, and I <laughs> threw it to Jason, and he turned it over going baseline. And it was a good – he had the seal, but, you know, he turned around, I guess, contact, he he lost it. It was a good play defensively, he, but he had the ball. I went up the sideline, coach right. And I'm like, what I tell you? You know, he was like, you can shoot the ball or you pass it. But you yep, pass yep. it out. You don't pass it inside. I was like, damn. And I was like, my bad, Jay. I was like, what do you want me to do? The next couple of times Jay was calling for it, I was like, Jay, like, what do you want me to do? Man? I gotta... oh. I was like, you when, it was, you know... when we were moving the ball and those guys were hanging in that hide spot, they were getting those dump off dunks, which is what coach really wanted. Them. They didn't have to exactly. make decisions, you know, with post moves and passing, like, hey, just hide out down here. Let these guards do their uh -huh. thing. The bigs are going to mm -hmm. step up and you're going right. to get relocate the drop off easy and you're gonna get right at the back basket because of the attention that the guards are getting so it was it was it was ahead of its time at that time and now everybody's doing something like that yeah, yeah it was definitely ahead of his time he was like no post ups no po unless yeah. um he he let me post up he you know a little bit in there um but I was like can I post up at first it was like that was the battle 
they wanted me on the block. I'm like, oh, I can't post up anybody in the Big East. Are you serious? I can't post anybody <laughs> on this team. <laughs> give me like a little 15 foot post up yeah. and, and face, and I could probably be a little bit better that way. We could use that as a post up, you know. Um, but then we got better at that. That was our battle. We got at that. And that's how everything kind of was 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 forming and, and playing. And uh we started, you start, like I said, you saw you was there in the beginning stages, Jay. Like you saw, we started getting getting better. We started understanding how to use our individual talents and play together as a team because everybody wanted to do it on them by themselves. Everybody thought they could do it and win the game, you know, um, yep. not in a selfish way, though. Everyone wanted to do it for the team, but they were being selfish and not playing together. And once we got that figured out, we were, um, you know, that's the start of the program. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, Kurt, the, the the biggest memory, and I tell this story all the time. I probably tell it once a year to every team I've ever uh, been a coach for. And um, there was a time in the locker room. Um, where you guys, it was you, it was Alan Ray, Jay Frazier, Randy Foy, and you guys had like, uh, this was early in your guys' career, and you guys had in your lockers, you still had like press clippings from, you know, your accolades in high school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was you and Randy, and you guys started like pulling that stuff down and saying like, yo, we got to get over this stuff from the past. If we don't get it done here and we don't win, none of us are getting all these things that we want to get no pro opportunities and things like that. So I remember kind of being in the back, kind of like putting Gatorades in the fridge and seeing y'all kind of kind of have that moment where, of, of like, hey, we kind of got to get over, you know, you know, Jay Frazier had his McDonald's All-American stuff and you guys all had different things from the past and y'all were like, yo, if we don't get it done here, none of this stuff's going to matter. And I really thought that was the moment where things started to go you know, in, in the right direction at Noble was when you guys, you know, had that conversation in the locker room and, and it started to translate to the floor and you started doing things in a different level of buy-in that was like really cool to see. It's, it's so funny you say that, Jay. Um, like not thinking we were trying to do that, but those were some of our fears though. And we verbalized it differently. Like obviously Jay was the most decorated coming in. People thought one and done and his injuries. Yeah. And so for him himself, he saw, you know, things are going to change. And then we saw that and we saw his pain and his fight like immediately. Then it's it's me thinking, you know, OK, you know, I'm going to come into college um, or I'm going to play some minutes. You know, I'm not you no know, one and done, but, you know, I should be playing some minutes. And then I'm just not playing at all. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, God damn, like no, <laughs> like no tick, no tick, Jay, for real. Um, and then Randy coming in there and, you know, being thrust into, you know, the star and point guard role and, you know, now coach Wright is on him, coaching him up hard, 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 you know, a little harder than what he was. And now he got to play defense hardly when I got to chase the point guards hard, 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 like all over the floor and the 94 of my feet, you know, Allen had it the easiest. Allen Ray had the smoothest transition. <laughs> Into Villanova, he had nothing to worry about. He was just looking at us like, like what? Like, what are you talking about? I'm gonna, I'm so gonna you guys right that. behind. In the early parts, I think he did, but then no, no. later on, if he wasn't taking charges, he was get him out of there. He was no, no. get him out. That, that was, but no, it's because I'm gonna tell you that was the sophomore. That was because of his transition was so smooth. He came to sophomore and like. Now he had some real focus on him, and it was different because he backed up Gary Buchanan, right? right. right. So it was like nothing. He came in just to shoot. Just yep, yep, shoot. Yep. And he would knock him down. He had the easiest job. He was in there defending as hard as he could, but it was masked by the things a little <laughs> bit. Easiest job. Everybody, Randy, the head of the snake, running to show. Me, yep. no tick. Jason. All that was getting hurt. Like, we the ones who had it. Allen was fine. Sophomore year, Allen probably had it the most. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, he probably went from not having nobody looking at him to, like, hey. And then my role changed where coach was like, okay, you're playing, and I'm not getting, like, really no attention as far as, like, anything negative. And then Randy's developing, and he's fine. So, you know, and then Jason's still struggling. So then, but like you said, we were like, we got to get it done. Um because, you know, everything we had before is people looking at us now as, as bus already. It's like it's only been like a year and a half. And um, I think everybody just was like, we just got to win and try to fulfill what we wanted to do, which was 
make Villanova a, a household name. Yep. yep. And that's that's what happened, man. So yep. after leaving, so after Nova, Billy Lang gets the head coaching job. Was that an easy decision? Pretty much. Was there still opportunity at Nova? I know you said you wanted yeah, to coach at know, Nova. I think it was it was it wasn't easy. It was tough. Um, because obviously we were built at two years, and you know, I think you guys really we had such a nice thing going. You know, you could see where it was starting to head. You know, once you started, we added Kyle Lowry, and you know, and and, you know, we had, you know, you guys and like everybody was starting to gel and it was like a great family, you know, um, for me, career wise, you know, Billy gave me an opportunity to kind of go, you know, you know, I was in that video coordinator spot and, and gave me a chance to kind of, you know, come down there and be one of his lead assistants and start recruiting and start getting on the court and coaching. See, now the, the, the new age now, all, all these positions now can get on the floor. Back then, you couldn't get on the court unless you were an assistant, one of the three assistant coaches. You know, so now exactly. today's generation, you know, you could be an ops guy, you could be a grad assistant, you could be, a, you know, a video coordinator, and you can be on the floor uh, working players out. Back then, you were you were handicapped, you were handcuffed. Right. So by NCAA rules. So, you know, um, yeah, it was a great opportunity for, for me. You know, Coach Wright and I sat down, and Coach Lang sat down, and we looked at it and said, "Hey, there's a chance for Jay to go and be an assistant coach, uh, start recruiting, you know, um, get on the floor coaching." And he also gave me the head the head coaching job for the JV team. So I was the head JV coach at the Naval Academy. I was doing the recruiting and I was doing all the scouting and everything and on the court. So it was a great opportunity for me at that time because I was 23 to start really getting out there and taking the things I learned at Villanova and starting to apply them and, and getting some um, you know coaching experience as well. But they had a JV team there too. That's awesome. Yeah, I was I was the head JV coach there for the seven years I was there. I was doing the JV team behind the scenes, you know, playing like 15 well, games. Who, who would you play as far as on the JV team? So we would play like junior colleges uh, and a lot of up the nations, top 25 post-grad schools like Fork Union, Massanutten, Hargrave. You know, we would play all those IMG. You know, we would play like the top, you know, prep schools and post-grad schools to recruit players and also to give the guys that weren't maybe getting a lot of minutes on the varsity you know, a chance to develop, you know, so it was, it was really kind of a developmental program that we used uh, within the JV. And we had some guys that ended up playing on varsity eventually down the line. So it's pretty cool. So that, so is that JV team like a post-grad program, so to speak, but, but you, no, you also not, can. Yeah. Not like a, it's just like a, a college JV. Like North Carolina has a JV team too. And they do the same thing with that JV team in, in many ways. Obviously most of those kids don't end up playing for the team, but they use it to play against, you know, a lot of the nation's top post-grads. So it's a recruiting tool for them. For, for us at Navy, it was a developmental thing and a recruiting tool. You could take a kid that wasn't uh -huh. playing the third string point guard and send them down on JV and let them go play 30 minutes on a, on a Saturday uh -huh. afternoon. So he can get some exper experience, you know, then bump it back up to varsity for practice on Monday, you know, and bop them back and forth. It was almost like a like a little a, a G League team, <laughs> if, if, you, if you really think about it, you right. know. But he ran, ran the same stuff, so it'd be easy transition. Yeah. Exactly, a lot of times, kind of direction. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's and, awesome. And that's kind of what we did. So yeah, it was good experience, man, for me. You know, um, you know to do that and, and kind of have my hand in a, a lot of the pots there at the Naval Academy over the time I was there and, you know, eventually became associate head coach and helped build that program and then took on my own uh, head coaching job when I went to NIAC, so. Now, did you get, what did you get at the Naval Academy? Um, I thought I saw you a part of some ceremony or had some credentials or <laughs> was that just, I know it wasn't just being an employee at an institution. I had to been, that looked like something special. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so they had this thing called like uh, where you could be, you know, coaching and also get commissioned. And I, I took advantage of that. Uh, Fred Quarterbaum, who also uh, was at Kansas now, he's the one that told me about it because he had wow. did that back at the neighborhood. Pretty Academy. cute. I love that dude. Yeah, love that yeah. Dude. So he's one of my favorites. He was the first guy to do it, and he knew all about the program. So when I got to the Naval Academy, I had called him. And because uh, I saw it was an opportunity to do it and uh, you get commissioned as an officer so you could coach and you'd be in uniform and it provided a lot of different experience. So you got a chance to be a part of the military. You got a chance to be a commissioned officer. You got a chance to see all the ins and outs of the military. It added extra responsibilities, but it also gave you a chance to get better benefits, uh, better pay, 
Um, and, and during that time where coaches weren't making a whole lot of money, you know, and everything. So, um, yeah, yeah, it made sense to do it. And, uh, you know, it was a great experience to to not just be coaching at the Naval Academy, but to have a chance to be in the Navy and see all the ins and outs and inner workings of that, teach classes, be a part of the physical mission and everything like that. So shout out to Fred Quarterbaum for giving me some good advice and encouraging me to do it. Um, and, and I followed his lead on that and had a great time doing that. So did you have to go through like physical training and all of that? Like go through like the whole. No, no, no. You do some physical training at that time. I mean, I was 23, 24, so I was in great shape. Yeah, I'm still in pretty good shape, but I was in great shape. No problem making the mile run in a certain amount of time, the push ups, the sit ups, and all the things required at that time. So I would just finish playing college ball, you know, within the last couple of years at that time. Right. So, um, any, yeah, man, it, was, it was cool. Any future obligations or like you forever uh, commissioned officer? Uh, the naval no so i did i did a five year stint of my seven years there i was in actually commissioned and in the navy for five years so at the end of that term i was done so i'm a reserve now um we used to joke all the time like i was actually on the real like i, I never really got deployed but if they ever wanted to pull me <laughs> i could have actually got sent somewhere so uh billy lang used to joke about that all the time he'd be like can craft and make this game or is the navy gonna pull him somewhere so i <laughs> got I was very fortunate to be able to do all my time uh, at the Naval Academy, whether it was teaching or doing stuff with the, the freshmen at Plebe Summer, or we had different watch hours that we would have to do things during the during the month and things like that. So um, it was a big obligation, but at the same time, it was a great experience. And, you know, at that time, I was, you know, didn't have any kids. I don't have kids now, but I mean, I, I, I was just all in. So I got a chance to see a lot of different things, and it, it was a big part of my development, too. That's dope, man. I had no idea um how how detailed, you know, and detailed that, that was. So good good stuff, man. Good stuff. I'm I'm happy for you, man. I, that's what's up, man. I, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> that's great. Like this is the stuff we want to hear. Like I had no idea, Jay, all this time. So that's that's good to know. Um I know someone, I know two people now in the Navy. Uh so so that's that's really, really good. So now you moved on to NIAC. You spend what six years there, or something like that. You said earlier. Yeah, six years. Yeah. Yep. Six years there. Uh, your alma mater, um, helping get that program and things back. What was that like? Your first head coaching experience. Well, obviously, your first head coaching, but well, yeah, in, in that sense, you know, your your whole yeah, program a, from a, yeah. all to yourself. Yeah, and that's your alma mater. Yeah, from a collegiate standpoint, I think you know, mm -hmm. you know, I always say I, I'm probably the only person in the history of basketball that's been a part of three programs that were rated dead last in the, pro in the country before I got there. So like when we took over at Navy, when Billy took over and then we came as a staff, like Navy was rated dead last in the country. And when I took over at NIAC, NIAC was rated dead last in the country for division two. And then we saw the same thing happen when I came to Mount Eastern Shore. So I don't encourage anybody to do this. <laughs> These are the <laughs> <kind of> challenges <laughs> that right. require um, a lot of uh, a lot of sleepless nights, man. Oh, right, man, right, right. was great to come from. But yeah, I think for me, it was, you know, I was at that time in my career. I was 10 years in. Um, I had been an assistant for 10 years and, and learned a lot at Villanova, learned a lot at Navy and, and I was just ready to kind of, you know, take over and, and run my own show. And I had some other opportunities. I had uh, actually interviewed for the head job at Maryland Eastern Shore, you know, came close, didn't get it at that time. Interviewed for the head job at St. Francis, New York, came close, didn't get it. You know, I was coming up as like the number two or three, um, you know, pick. And, and I wasn't, you know, I was coming in close, but not getting the job. So my alma mater opens up and they took a chance on me young. I was 30 years old at the time. and. Uh, I just thought it was a great opportunity for me to get some head coaching experience. And, uh, you know, and uh, that's what I went with. And uh, we had a great time rebuilding that program and, you know, being an alma mater. It's not it's, it's a, just a cool thing to be there. I had the same administration was there as when I played. So it was a lot of familiarity there, um, you know, not just within the athletic administration, but also with the, the academic side. And I could walk in the registrar. I knew everybody. You know, a lot of the teachers taught me. They were there. So it was good. Yeah. It was, it was family. Um, and, and we really built a competitive program there during that time and became one of the best teams in the country defensively at Division II and uh, had a lot of fun, a lot of great stories, a lot of great young men that came through there and, uh, you know, had successful careers, went on and played overseas or, or became professionals in, in life. And uh, so I'm That's proud of what we had there and had, had a great time. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And now 
the head coach of Maryland Eastern Shore, and you guys are doing unbelievable things. I mean, you guys took down Fordham. Mm -hmm. You guys took down Temple, almost UConn, at UConn. Like, you guys are doing your thing. Uh, undefeated right now at home. Like, what has it been? I know the first couple years was rough. It was right when COVID and everything was going on and trying to rebuild during that time. I can't imagine what it was like, you no know, practicing, maybe transfers, trying to recruit. You know, that's, that's just not how you want to start a season or build a team, um, you know, with that. And, and everybody was dealing with it. But you yeah. guys got over that. And after two years, um, you guys are just like rolling. This is year three for you, right? Or year four? This is year four, but year three in terms of we got canceled during COVID. So, I mean, you're right on. Right, yeah. I get here. It's like the last rated program in the country. We start building it a little bit in my first year. Um, you know, win five or six games that year. And I think we went five games the year before I got the job. They won three games. And then we get shut down. We get a really good recruiting class that came in to back up what we had, what we thought was a strong recruiting class that I initially got. And then the season gets canceled because of COVID. So we lost a lot of guys. And then the guys that we actually were able to keep um, that stuck it out are a big part of what we're doing right now. Like those guys, you know, had a bond that was something like you can't even describe, <laughs> you know, like they, they had a season taken away from them, couldn't practice, you know, stuck in the dorms, got sent home. You know, we didn't play five on five for a whole year. You know, when we did anything, it was like a few skill workouts here and there. And uh, they came out with a with an edge on, you know, with a chip on his shoulder, you know, last season. And that when you refer to us going from being picked dead last in the country to winning 11 games and beating Fordham, taking UConn a distance, winning at North Carolina Central in the league and making a jump from five wins to 11 wins after not playing the year before. And now coming in this year right now, being 10 and eight, you know, in January, um, you know, tied for first in the conference and, and having beat, you know, one at Temple, who everybody knows beat Houston the other night and, and uh, you know, having good wins against Columbia, Maris, Lehigh, some good non-conference wins. And, you know, it, it's just a great group of guys. They, they, they've stuck together. They bought in. Um, they, they play hard-nosed defense, which is something I've always been big on. And uh, that's what's going on. We got great chemistry. We play defense. Fourth in the nation in steals. 15th in the nation in turnovers forced. And, and that's what what we do and that's what we're about when i went to that temple game uh <laughs> i was heading to the gym and it was so funny i was looking at bleach report for something i don't know what i was looking at then i saw temple versus marley's for sure and i, I texted you right away didn't yeah. know if i was gonna get a response you answered me immediately you need tickets i said i'm there like <laughs> i'm there i don't care i get there and like you know i've I think it's my first Temple game. It's my first Temple game ever, you know, going there. And it was empty. I was like, damn. And it was great to see them get their butts kicked. <laughs> Everything you're saying about your team, saw that from just watching them play. Uh, your, your, your center, your big, how he played um, within the game didn't try to do too much, was, was doing everything, doing a lot of the attitude plays defensively, making the extra pass, setting the screen, then making the shots. So your, your, your guards quick, you know, pushing the ball, trying to, you know, press up on them, making the extra pass, knocking down the shot, you know, your wings, um, Darson came with the braids, slashing, getting, yeah. getting up on the glass defensively. Like I was like, I said, he has – some of, of, of everything. And then you had your, your guard that come off the bench, pretty stocky, on mm -hmm. the ball, defender, quick guard. You can also can score a little bit, get to the basket, pass. Like I was like, he got some of everything. I, I like his team. And you just see Temple couldn't, couldn't withstand it. And you, you just, you guys played within yourselves. You guys played together. And the, the best thing I saw was just, you said how close the team was. I saw it on the court. Part. But when I went to the locker room afterwards and just see how they was just all over each other and yeah, loving yeah. each other. And I even had some intel from the, the Temple staff of how they admired, you know, your, your kids and the trainer staff, how they admired your kids. It was like, wow, like, you know, we wish our kids were like this. <laughs> you know, they saw how they were respectful. They said how respectful they were. Yes, ma'am. You know, no, ma'am. Yes, sir. Like, just 
with each other and making sure everything's good. And it's just like, yo, it was and no wonder they kicked out. Ass. You know what I, mean? I started hearing little things like that. And I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I was, I was happy. I was happy for you guys. I appreciate it, man. I awesome. think, you know, a lot of those guys you're talking about are, are, you know, are from places that you're very familiar with. You know, um, you know, the kid that came off the bench, the stocky kid that's Glenn Jojo Anderson from uh yeah. Harlem kid, you know, that, that played at Brooklyn Collegiate. You know, the other guard that was scrappy that started for us, he's from the Bronx. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the and uh, kid, the kid you just said, Jojo. This is when I knew you had something special, Jay. And I knew this kid, he got it. You know, we always say like he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. <laughs> right? right? You know, he, he, he don't understand it yet. And and again, I, I'm not there every day. And you might you obviously know better than me. This was when I saw him play, and I was like, that's a team. He Jojo was coming up was crucial uh towards the end of the game. And he turned the ball over. And he could have just fouled the guy, you know, or let the guy get back. You guys still were up, sprinted back, and still was able to get the charge on the guy. And now then that, he looked at you. He looked at you and was yep, like, yep. my back. I was like, <laughs> so we're going to win this game. So we're going to win this game. Yep. Things that, like was, that. That, that was Amadou Fafana. And him and, and the kid Jojo yeah. they do a lot of similar things defensively. Okay. So sometimes people can confuse them. But – the play you're talking about, that was Amadou Fafana. Because I always say, if you're going to give it up, you got to get it back for us. So that, that, get it back. He, he gave it up, and then he got it back, and he was like, he's like, don't take right me back. out. <laughs> yeah, I know I messed up, but I went and got it back. Like, it was crucial. Like, And that's when I was like, that that's a sign of a mature uh, player who understood the, the moment, you know, and, and tried to make a – a great play. You know, this guy still might get two free throws, but I'm not going to just give him two free throws. I'm going to try to make the ref make a decision and try to give it up for my team and throw my body back up. And, and it worked in his favor. I got the ball back. Like It was just, it was a perfect sign. You know, when Temple just thought they had a breath of fresh air trying to make the run, and you guys said, no, sorry, take it right back. I, mean, I agree that was a big time play because I think they were trying to find a way to get back in the game. And I, I remember telling my staff, like, we got up so much. I mean, we were kind of, like, dominating the game. And I was like, there's so much time left. And they're good. You know, they got the time. Yeah. You know, like, like, that was like, yeah. this is a lot of time. You know, we were up, like, double digits with, like, nine, ten minutes to go. And it's like the type of lead in those type of games that you want kind of later when it's, <laughs> you know, like, like when it's, yeah. like, four minutes left, you know, not with that much time. So, you know, um, and then they started squeaking back in there and it got a like five or six point game is when that play happened. And I think that kind of deflated their life. And mm -hmm. they were like, man, these guys are just just so scrappy. They're just not going to let us so do it. Scrappy. Uh, so scrappy. So scrappy. We were to pull away with the win. And, and, and like I said, it wasn't just the win. It was kind of the way we won. We kind of like took it and we we controlled the game most of the second half. So we were so excited for our guys and our program to you know, we beat Fordham last year and, and we've had other, you know, solid wins and, you know, Monday game, games and things like that. But like Temple, like that's a household name. John Chaney, you know, the, the, the banners yes. up there, you know, Aaron McKee yes. here now and the, the arena, Philly, the big five and all the success of that program, you know. So it was definitely a signature win for our guys, our program um, and our institution. So it was it was it was especially a part. I was happy to have you there, man. That was pretty cool. Man, I, I was so happy to be there. I can't tell you the energy. I felt like I won the game, especially <laughs> being with you guys in the locker room and cheering for you guys on, on that side and the empty arena hearing me. I was just excited for you guys. Um, and just to see you how you guys dominated. Like you guys dominated. Like you yep. said, and it was like even I was like, holy shit, like, they, they like, is it going to be like a 20-point win? Like, like what? you know, but like you said, there was so much time left, and I knew that, you know, the game of runs, they can make a run, the refs can get in the game a little bit, make it a little close. I, I get all of that, but it was just the attitude plays. I don't know if you call it attitude plays, you got your own thing, but it was just those plays that we know just – you know, that allowed you guys, um, you guys missed shots, went on a string of missing shots, but you guys played defense on the other end, you know, like it still was a, it was just an unbelievable good college game to watch. And I was excited for you to get that one. Um, but I also sure. saw that most recently you got your, your hundredth win, right? Correct. No, I wish I got my hundredth win. Not yet though. I got my seventh. 
Yeah, yeah. 70 went, oh yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. I thought I saw some that said 100 <laughs> went. I was like, That might be up to yeah, 75 Jay. now. But it was, it, it was actually pretty cool. It happened because it happened the same day that um, that we broke like the record for um, something that, oh, the, oh we, that we broke the record for a non-conference, like the best non-conference record in like 27 years that we had. Wow. And uh, that was the same, we won that game. And then that same night was my 70th win. So we kind of, I didn't even realize it until after the fact, we kind of pieced it all together. Then, you know, it, it's, you know, the, the places I've coached, you know, have been tough places, you know, tough rebuilds. So, um, you know, I, I remember every one almost, you know, because they, they were hard to get. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you don't forget those and you learn. <laughs> you don't forget <laughs> those. Yeah. You don't forget, yeah, you don't question. forget trauma. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't forget that, but um, the program is, is is going in an unbelievable direction. I mean, like you said, nationally ranked uh, in many defensive categories, and that's where you know championships is built on, the foundation is built on. You got to lay your hat on the defense, uh, and and you're getting the right guys in there. It's showing on the court. They showing the love, passion, and I'm sure just the whole community there is just excited as to the future um, and, and what it can bring. And I'm, I'm happy for you, Coach, man, to see you um, at, at a nice spot, man, and, and, and getting some some wins against some some formidable opponents, you know, and this, this, this does really, this, this helps. This helps with, with everything, you know. I'm sure it helps you as a competitor, um, yeah. you know, get more confidence in the things you're doing. You know, we all, when we have success, you know, we get more confident and, and I can't wait to just see what other great things you you do. So I'll be I watching. Appreciate it, man. Most we got definitely. eight seniors here. Yeah, we got eight seniors here, and they, like I said, they they lead the way for us. And a lot of times I'm coming to the huddle, and they know what I'm going to say before I even say it. You know, so you know they they're 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 locked in, and you know now the new challenges. And we talked a lot about this today as we prepare for you know our our opponent now playing North Carolina Central tonight. You know, now we're in this you know uncharted kind of waters here a little bit it's new a new space you know where now we go into places and people are more ready to play against us or people are trying to take us out you know and and, and we're more we're starting to become the hunted and we've normally been the hunters so we've been yeah. you know trying to stay consistent with that being stay let's stay that hunter mentality you know like let's stay you know let's remember when we weren't getting these type of wins and these type of a national recognition and things like that, you, you know, and, and and stay humble. And that's the biggest challenge. And that's what we want our guys to do because at a small school like Mallory's to show that hasn't experienced uh, much success in the history of his division one time, you know, that it's, you know, every little thing these guys do, do is it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So, you know, we're, we're constantly just trying to keep them, keep them focused, keep them locked in and, and, and challenging our eight seniors to, to continue to lead the way. And um, that's what we're striving to do. To keep us, give us the best chance to to keep playing in March, you know, and that that's the journey. That's the goal is to you know not just have a good season, and, you know, and wrap it up in the conference tournament, but to you know win that thing and and be playing in March and, and be in a position to get out there and try to win some games in the tournament. And that's not something Mount Eastern Shores ever ever been able to do at the Division One level. Sure, and you know that that message is you know messages I've I've heard before, and um, it's just. It's just the absolute truth. Um, you know, once you go from being the 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 hunter, you know, your mentality is, is different, you know. You might take a little bit more risk and you're just trying to go out there and get it. But once you become the hunted, you still gotta respect what's what's out there and be more together and like you said, just take more precious, you know, more pride and you know, possession of ball. And mm -hmm. making more smart decisions, and you know, not being so quick. Uh, that shot's not. I mean, I'm gonna take that shot. We're gonna pull it back out. You know, we, we you know we could get something good, but everybody being on the same page and just you know, let's just make sure we have more goods uh, and, and greats than, than anything bad. And um, that's the maturity of a team, and though that just translates to wins. And you, you see the, the the teams that are, have success for the most part. Some is you know high level talent. Um, gaudy talent, we get that. But then you see the teams that don't have all that talent. That's what they have, you know, that that poise and they understand what's going on. Um, and then that's where you guys are, are headed. I mean, again, that that Temple game to me, I just seen so much maturity. Like you say, eight seniors, and what you got, you just you just seen it. And I'm not sure the dynamic of the Temple's team 
as far as, you know, uh, the guys age, but you, you had a, a team out there. And yeah, yeah. You guys keep, you know, building with that and those seniors teaching those young guys and, and you know, when the mm -hmm. new guys come in and they know what the expectation is and we're not taking no crap, like this is the standard. And you guys got something special, man. You guys definitely got something special right now. And uh, the guys that are going to definitely be there another year, two years, uh, they're going to remember this season of, of first and, and things of that yeah. nature. And they're going to make sure that these next guys don't come in there and mess that up. Like like the <laughs> last dance, I thought Jordan was so true when he said that. It was like, you guys just coming in here just thinking sweet. Like, you guys ain't. Hey, do nothing, like, stop. And I, yo, I swear that's how I was at Villanova. Me and Kyle bumped heads in the beginning because I was like, Kyle, you think this is sweet? Like, do you know what we had to do? Like, I was like, we coming here and just, no, no. But sit well, and I think that, that's guys, what our like, older guys say to our young guys, the guys that are freshmen right now. They, you know, my seniors that were here when we, you know, back in the day, my first year where it was the moral victory stuff, you know, go in, play hard, and, you know, get beaten, you know, like, hey, we played hard tonight, you know, and, you know, like, we didn't have much talent, you know, and and you were kind of in that more victory zone, you, you know, just because we we're just year one and we didn't have much, you, you know, and you're just trying to figure it out. And uh, now these young guys are, you know, here beating Temple. So my, my, my senior all the time, like, y'all don't know <laughs> what we had to hey, go through. Let's not get right to get here. To get to this place. And now yeah, what yeah. I know – so they tell the young guys that. Now what I tell them is you, you got to still know what we got to keep doing to not just stay here, but to keep going further. So I think it, you, you start to gain like a, you, you, a not just a respect of the process, but also you look at the teams that have been good with consistency. You know, like when Villanova has gotten good and they're just good all the time now. And, and the, the how hard that is to just always be good. You know, you know, you know, we've been a program in the last few years where if we went out and played hard, you know, everybody, hey, that's okay. Hey, you know, and I always say, like, we want to be more than that. Now at this time, you know, coming out, we just play hard. It's not enough. There's expectations now for what we've done to win more basketball games. And that's what that that's yeah, what we're all striving to be in this business. Yeah. Players, coaches, is to be in situations where, you know, those those expectations are to win. And it takes a lot of work to get there. And we've always tried to do it with our culture the same way Jay taught us at Villanova that we're going to bring in the talent. We're going to get the talent better, whether it's more elite talent or whatever talent we have, we're going to get them better, but we're going to be, we're going to stay focused on our culture every single day because if like the temple game in that game, now temple, I think has come a long way and we probably gave him a wake up call that day, but I in believe so. our, yeah. culture, our culture superseded their talent, you know? So, so if Absolutely. You, it's not a seven game series, we don't got to beat you four times. We just had to beat you that one night. And on that one night we had better culture. So that's what we tell our guys. We've beaten teams off of our culture, not our talent. Now, as we keep getting more talent and getting it better and you keep pushing this culture thing forward, that's how the Villanova's, the Dukes, and you know what I mean? Like they become, you know, household names. And we got a long way to go to get there. We're still kind of at the beginning stages of it, but a lot of the work from that first year is starting to come together. And we just got to keep staying at it and keep the culture at the forefront. And that's our journey right now. So we keep telling them, don't get caught up in any of the individual accolades or any of the – you know, Temple beat Houston. Okay, that's great. You got to play North Carolina Central. What does that mean? It means that you beat Temple, and it means Temple beat Houston. It doesn't mean anything else more than the other people might make it mean other things. But we've got to take care of our business every single day and stay focused. So funny you said culture because I was talking to a, uh, a Temple alum because he was buying me drinks at the game, and we were going talking about <laughs> before. And that's the same thing I said, Jay. I said. Their culture is better than y'all culture. I said, look at those guys. I, just, I said, I said, look when you guys make a shot, you guys are like this. So yeah, I said, yeah. look at those guys. They're back on defense, sprinting back. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, get them. I said, look at. I said, look at their bench. I said, every time somebody come off the bench, they slap everybody stand up. They slap everybody hand, go across. Look at you guys go to the bench. Nobody stands up. I said, <laughs> not one person. I said the guy just goes right to his seat and just puts the towel. I said. That's why we, we won the game. And he was looking. I was like, the little <laughs> thing, man. I said, you got to see that. I said, you could tell, like, when somebody is, when it's a team, and then you got a bunch of individuals. But I think you guys woke them up, embarrassed them. Um, good for you guys, bad for them, but also good for them because it, 
they started winning some games after that and playing better. And um, hopefully, well, we've you had know, that done to us, and we've done it yeah. to other people. So you know, <laughs> that's part I, of. The I journey. hope they went out. I hope they went out the rest of the season because it makes you guys look good. <laughs> and uh, for the Villanova loss, it makes the Villanova look, look good too. Like they lost to you know. I hope they went out. You know yeah, what I mean yeah, to help yeah, the yeah, schedule. Yeah, yeah. So, in that sense, you know, I'll never root for Temple, but keep keep winning <laughs> Temple. Keep winning. <laughs> no question. No sure, question. man. Question. But I won't hold you much longer, Coach. Man, I appreciate you taking this time out, especially on game day, to uh, talk some hoops with me, man, and just share your story with the Villanova community. So I wish you the best of luck tonight. I'm gonna be checking the scores. And I'm going to definitely uh, send you a text, man, no matter what the outcome is. I'm sure you guys will play hard and play the right way. Appreciate you, man. And Villanova, this is family, man. Without Villanova and the family, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. You know, Coach Wright giving me a chance and the whole Villanova community embracing me and, you know, the players from then and in, in the past, Alvin Williams, guys and former coaches and ev everybody at Pinckney and you guys, you know, I'm still tight with all you guys, Mike Nardi, Alan Ray, Randy Foy, Kyle. Larry came and spoke to our guys on a Zoom call during the, the pandemic. You coming to the game, and you can't say enough about my time at Villanova and, and the true family that it is for everybody that's that's ever been a part of it. The, the phrase "once a Wildcat, always a Wildcat" is true. So I always got my visa up. I'm always supporting Villanova, except for when they're playing against Maryland Eastern Shore. <laughs> Jay, but again, I appreciate you, man, being the person you are, the big brother, the mentor, uh, everything you know, a uh, role model. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, keep blessing your energy. Uh, keep blessing everybody with your energy and knowledge. And uh, good luck tonight, brother. I'll be reaching out. Thanks, Kurt. Proud of you, man. Yeah, keep man. doing it, man. For sure, man. Go Cats. Later, brother.